what a gorgeous old car, you're probably thinking. But here's the thing. Every part on this Aston Martin DB4 GT is brand spanking new. It's not an original with a hip replacement, a lung transplant, a set of shiny dentures and some hair dye. This is as freshly minted as a newborn baby. Every single part is interchangeable with an original car from the late 1950s, and it looks completely authentic. So accurate is it that when I first sat in it, I actually wondered whether I wasn't the subject of some elaborate deception. Even the beautifully hand-painted number plate and safety signs are perfectly imperfect. Out of the garage, and onto a sunny Snetterton. It's amazing thing how far Aston Martin has come. I mean, this company now, as well as its range of road cars, is developing the Valkyrie, and it's also got this. How cool is that? If you're not familiar with what the DB4 GT is, it can feel strange walking up to the front, which looks like a regular four-seat DB4, five or six. Then you see the much more compact wheelbase that means this is a strict two-seater. This particular car is the prototype for the projected 25-car run of DB4 GT continuations, and it's been styled on the 1950s prototype for the original DB4 GTs. That car was known as DP199, and it was raced at Le Mans in 1959 by a Swiss team, hence the red and white stripe over the roof of this one, and the Le Mans lighting for the Randalls. Only 75 DB4 GTs were built between 1959 and 1963, and just eight of those were the lightweight specification which the continuation cars mimic, using thinner 1.2 aluminium for the bodywork, and issuing bumpers so that the scoop for the oil cooler stands proud like the scoop on a World War II Hawker Typhoon. Like the originals, these will be built in Newport Pagnell at the wonderful Aston Martin Works Department. So what sort of sensations do you get from a car that was effectively from 1959? Well, everything moves around a bit more. This car has been rose jointed, so they've taken the rubber bushings out. So although you've got the squidge in the tyre, so when you turn into a corner like this, you've got a little bit of play just to load up the sidewalls of the tyre, and then it's very precise, whereas if you had the rubber bushings in there, you'd have that extra squidge and you kind of get it sometimes out of sync. But this is just beautiful, it's so easy to manage. So we've still got lever arm, dampers at the rear, live rear axle obviously, we've got a limited slip dip. 350 brake horsepower and 350 pounds for the torque, which is more than enough in a car that weighs just under 1,200 kilos. A glorious and surprisingly strong engine is an exact replica of the original double overhead cam straight six with two spark plugs per cylinder. The gearbox has four forward ratios, but is now a dog box with straight cut gears, as you can hear. Gearbox is amazing when you get it right. That third to fourth, fourth to third. Back to third for Richie's. And then you pour it in here, turn it with just a little bit too much speed, and you kind of sort it out in the corner. You, not big steering inputs, but you drive it on the throttle as well. Now we come to the hairpin here. And it's a bit of push at the front here, so you've got a big engine up front, and then you can slide it on the exit, but you don't want to get too much angle in there. Ah, oh, shift to third. Palmer here. So this is the corner, third gear, this is where it feels absolutely at home. Oh. <laughs> so some people are wondering why these cars aren't road registered and it's because they are exactly like the originals but they're not taking chassis numbers from original cars, they're not chopping up old DB4s to do this, which is very good, that would be sacrilege. So these are new chassis and therefore you just can't sort of take those things in to get road registered. With 0 to 60 miles an hour taking about 6 seconds and top speed just above 150 miles an hour, the performance is in step with today's best two-wheel drive hot hatches. But in contrast with anything modern, 
the theatre involved in acquiring those figures is rather more dramatic. And of course, where this car really comes alive is when you begin working the lateral grip of the L-section Dunlop tyres. At the end of the day, what makes driving, I think, so fun is that interaction between the tyre and the road. And in this, you just get so much more time because those big sidewalls and the rose joint suspension makes you feel really connected. You just learn all the time in this car and it just floats around. It actually deals with the kerbs remarkably well. This wonderful wooden rim wheel is 15 inches in diameter instead of 16 inches. But apparently that was actually an option back in the day. It just dances across the tarmac this. We're going for one more lap. There are a lot of track day cars out there at the moment you can spend one and a half million pounds plus taxes on. But this is without a doubt where my money would go. I wish just occasionally we could do smell vision because the smell of fuel in here mixed with the Connolly leather, it's such a heady mix. Wow, <laughs> what a car. That was pretty intense, but wonderful. And there are times, there are times you used to drive cars, and oh, that's, that's that's brilliant. But you're happy to hand the keys back. With this, I could just keep driving this. I think for as long as I live. It's wonderful when you first get into this car. Things that you notice. So you sit in this tillet seat, uh, which got the beautiful quilted Connolly leather. Uh, you get the smell of that, and it sits you just slightly reclined. So you'd normally get into a, a modern car or a modern race car certainly and you'd just be that much more upright. And this, it instantly puts you in the frame of mind for the sort of car that you're going to be driving. Equally, the weightings of everything are all slightly sort of, you know, it's, it's just beautiful. So you've got this gear lever that looks really flimsy but it's actually sort of really robust and then the, the indicator stalks that are, feel, do feel really flimsy. So you, you have to use different weightings for everything and everything you touch, the quality in it, the, the materials is just, it's another world. All these beautiful dials, one, two, three, seven plus the clock going on. It's like being in a cockpit of an aircraft. It is just a, a beautiful car. And to think that this has been created from scratch pretty much is unbelievable. It's amazing and I love it. If you hadn't already gathered, I'm smitten. The feeling of driving this car on a sunny day Controlling the slip and grip of the tyres with a combination of right foot and thin wooden wheel is up there with the best feelings in any car. Old, new, or a combination of the two.